Welcome back. This is another uh, Cypher 30 um, quick little programming guide that we're doing here. So what I've done is, is I've created a Boolean writable point for central plant enable. Um, there is an input from the panel where they have a switch to do a plant override. So if the plant is ever overridden on, it'll follow uh, the command to come on. But then we also have an outdoor air temperature sensor with an outdoor air uh, lockout set point. So that's OAT underscore LO underscore set point. So also what I did was I removed the pins, views, I'm gonna go to the slot sheet. And I like to remove all the unnecessary things that are uh, that are being used. So we go here, shift, right click, config the flags. I wanna make it hidden. So that way the only thing that the customer has um, when I bring the points in will be the set point itself. So actions set. Um, they want anything below 50 degrees outside air temperature to lock out their chillers. Even though it's a, a low pressure system, they like uh, and they have older. They have some older chillers here, so they prefer to get a little bit of a load on them before they uh, decide to bring them on uh, on the cold days and the shoulder uh, the shoulder days, which we have uh, a good bit of them here in Houston. Because we'll go from 60 degrees to to 90 in three four hours. But um, so I wanted to show that, that we have the central plant enable, plant override, and outdoor air temp lockout. So when it actually starts seeing the temp, this will shoot out at, um, uh, hold on, I gotta delete that. That's not the way I wanted it done. So what I wanted to do is I wanna take this or block, basically saying if the central plant or the plant override is through, then what I want is an and block. So we'll go right here to logic, drag and drop an and block. I'm gonna get rid of all these pins that we don't need. Try to keep the wire sheet as clean as possible. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our chiller lead. So the way that this one's gonna work is we're gonna say if this and I'm gonna move all this stuff over as we go. And then as long as this is true, so what we'll do is we'll just move this out a little bit. And then this, so if these two are true, what we wanna do is we wanna start opening our ISO valves. So what we're gonna do is, um, we have, now this is just the beginning of the logic because there's other ways that we're gonna throw on top of this. So we're gonna, for right now, I'm gonna duplicate this OR block. And then I'm gonna say if this, then I'm gonna take, get rid of one of those pin slots because I don't need a third one. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another block based on cooling set point um, for the, our chiller enable set points for the, the lead lag, where if the chill water starts getting above a certain, a certain temperature for a certain amount of time, it will go ahead and it'll enable the, uh, the lag chiller. And everybody's kind of got their own way. It just depends on how the engineer has designed it. If he's done it based on a delta T between supply and return. Um, if the the return starts getting above a certain um, certain temperature, or the supply, where let's say they're maintaining, they're trying to maintain 42 in the building, but the temperature starts getting up to about 50, and then that's when they usually want to bring on a lag chiller. Or you got the ones where if you got mag bearing chillers. You can do, once the chiller gets up to about 80% full load, you start bringing the other chiller on so that way it drops the load. And uh, the long, you know, obviously with those types of chillers, you want two chillers running at you know 30 to 40% capacity 
which is going to use way, le way less electricity versus a chiller running at 80 to 100%. Um, so it just really all depends on, on the logic and how the sequence was written up uh, from the previous engineer. With this one, it's going to be based on uh, maintaining a supply water temperature. Uh, so we'll create a whole nother set point later on for that. But I just wanted to show some of the basic programming that we're going to do with this. So we got our chiller lead. So chiller one will be the lead, which will be true. Uh, what we'll do is we'll make this and block again, and we'll make it a not as input one. So that way, whenever the chiller lead is false, it'll be true in the and block, central plant, and then the outdoor lockout, as long as that's not holding it out, it'll work fine. So what we're doing though first is we're going to bring in, so we're gonna say we want to open our ISO valves. So we got condensing water and chill water, isolation valves. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is open this condensing water ISO valve then we'll take, it's not a built-in, I don't use it. Oh man, I forgot, I don't have a, I have to use something else. Okay, so, what we want to do is we're going to open up the condensing water first. Then we're going to open up our chill, uh, chill water ISO valve next. Once we open up that, we're going to use this feedback stating that our valve is open. So we're going to say here. So we're going to open up our two valves. I'm going to drop this down. I'll make it look a little bit cleaner in a little bit. But then I want to do another and block. Because what we want to do is we want to say if this is true and and this is true, then we want to go ahead and enable our chiller. Um, so, because what we've done is, is we've shown that our, um, our isolation valves are open and we got the call for command for the chiller to come on. And then the great part about the ciphers, like I was saying earlier, is that we can actually go ahead and override some of these values while we're doing the takeover, uh, you know, for the retrofit for everything to come on. But I just wanted to kind of share uh, some basic little chiller programming and there's gonna be more to it. Um, once we pull the points in, uh, into the folder, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create lead lag logic based on a schedule. And then uh, the same thing for the chill water pumps because the chill water pumps are not dedicated. And what the customer wants is they want the ability for the chill water pumps to also do their own lead lag uh, rotation, which will, um, which I'll be creating here below all this. Just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up. If there's anything you guys want to see, any questions, concerns, please comment below, uh, like and follow, please. Thank you.